uh, hello everyone uh, very good evening to all of you and thanks for joining in today we have uh, ali mustafa sheikh from postman who will be introducing us to the concept of apis and we'll get to know a lot about uh, how the front end can connect with the back end and all of that stuff uh, ali is a community manager from postman and uh, he is also the intel software innovator he has got uh, the certificate uh, for the google for education certified trainer and then also the larry k wilson rsv award winner so uh, thank you ali for uh, coming here and for uh, educating us with this uh, new knowledge of apis that is uh, very important uh, in the current developers community so over to you thank you so much for the introduction um, hello 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 everyone my name is ali mustafa and today we are going to talk about apis so um, let me share my screen and let's get started um also i've been told that the uh, you know session is kind of live on youtube but i will not be able to monitor the youtube chat um so if you're on youtube maybe you know uh, let's see how how we manage that but everyone uh, you know who is here in the chat uh, obviously i'll be able to kind of you know uh, interact with you folks and uh, kind of walk around this is a uh, like a complete hands on session so i expect you to be on your laptops that is better if you're not fine you can still kind of you know walk around with me and maybe see the practical later on so without uh, you know wasting much of time let's get started Okay, uh, looks like my window is visible to everyone. What I will do is I will spot myself so that you are able to see me. Okay, uh, so welcome. My name is Ali Mustafa and I'm a student committee manager here at Postman. I love to talk with students and especially kind of, you know, big nose who are into technology and from computer science background. Um, I call myself, I build human networks, not the computer ones. They are creepy and they scare me off. But uh, human networks are so simple to where it, uh, you know, it's just human to human connection. And that is why I expertise uh, in community management. Apart from that, I love uh, working with machine learning and also APIs are, uh, you know, my favorite. So let's get started. Now, the agenda is very simple. When we get started, we talk about APIs and we kind of, you know, discuss about APIs in general. Then we go in deeper and talk about request and responses. We try out things hands on with follow-up resources and q and At the end of the session, almost end of the session, I'll share with you how you can get some really great Postman swags. So stay till the end and uh, you will know how to get uh, some cool Postman swags, uh, like t-shirts, stickers, et cetera, and by the end. So yeah, uh, let's get started. APIs are very, very uh, kind of simple to understand. You might have seen that APIs are literally everywhere. Okay, just to give you a very simple example, here we talk about API as a digital restaurant. So if you have ever been to a restaurant, it's pretty simple. You go sit to the table, the waiter comes in, you know, kind of takes your order and then goes to the kitchen. And then the chef prepares it in the kitchen. What is happening is the abstraction of preparing your food is hidden from you. Okay, so the chef prepares the food, hands it over to the waiter, and then they serve you on a very good looking platter. Okay. So the whole idea is to hide the abstraction from you and provide you with the end result directly. Okay. So you kind of send a request via waiter and then you'll get a response via waiter. Your waiter is acting as an API, a bridge between you and the kitchen. And that is how we simplify APIs in a client server architecture. So in very simple terms, and the client, ATM machine, railway stations, you know, there are uh, ticketing machines, literally, there can be anything can be a client, your watch, uh, your mobile phone, your laptop screen, you know, your TV, anything can be a client. 
which can then use an API to contact with the server and then get back some data and then show it to you on that client. Let's kind of dive deeper into understanding how this works technically. Okay. So um, how many of you use Instagram or use any social media, which is basically, uh, you know, um, like which has story features and all that. Uh, LinkedIn also these days have story features. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, do you folks use it? No. Uh, give me a thumbs up in the chat, folks. I guess you're able to chat. Yeah. No. Yeah, I guess. Uh, okay. I see a yes. Only a yes. Where is other other 38 people? I see 39 people in the chat. <laughs> where, where are other 38? Are you folks sleeping? <laughs> Should we do a quick stand up exercise or something? Uh, now I see yes, yes, flowing in, right? Uh, I, I, I probably, uh, you know, think most of you are currently on Instagram. <laughs> um, that's why it, it took you some time to kind of, you know, respond back. But yeah, uh, whenever you are kind of talking about Instagram, uh, you know, in, in very simple term, whenever we talk about it, if you want to upload a story, what you do is you open Instagram, you go to the app, open the camera and click a photo. Okay. As soon as you click a photo, this process of your, you know, software, Instagram is a software which works on your mobile phone, which has camera, which is a hardware interface. So how does Instagram access your camera? It needs permission. It needs hardware level APIs to make sure it can utilize your camera, your hardware, and get a photo back from it, and then you know bring it to the interface. Now it does this, it does not end there. That is just step one, right? So if you are not a creative person, you know, creative pe person like me, what you will do is you will just say upload and it will upload and then your followers will be able to see it. But if you are a very creative person, you will go uh, add some GIFs, right? And then add some color and all that stuff. And that also calls APIs. So let's say you're searching for a GIF that will use Giphy as a backend and then it fetches APIs from Giphy and then you can add it to your story. This is an example of a public API, which you can also use in your application. Instagram is not having a proprietorship over Giphy. So if you are, if you want to use Giphy in your own application, you can do so by using their public APIs. Finally, you're done decorating your story. Now it's time for you to kind of upload that uh, to Instagram private servers. This is where private APIs come into the place which are not visible to public, right? But, you know, Instagram uses that API to upload your photo to their server and then make it visible to your audience. If you remember, there was a case, uh, use case, uh, you know, two months, one month back, I guess, where if you if you did to, you know, open a story, it would crash your phone, okay? Uh, Instagram story. So it was like, people were like, hey, someone hacked Instagram. They did not actually hack Instagram. They use Instagram private API and added a heavy payload, which required a lot of processing. I had I have a Snapdragon Triple Eight mobile phone, so when I opened that story, nothing happened because my processor was able to process that very properly, and my phone did not crash. You know, different level of flex, but yeah. Um, the whole point is APIs. Okay, APIs can do wonders uh, if not secured properly. Uh, dangerous, right? Because anyone can kind of you know then add a payload which um, can kind of crash people's mobile phones. Um, that is just one part. Okay, they can literally do a lot of things uh, apart from that. Okay, what is an API? <laughs> Application programming interfaces. Apart from their definition, API are very very simple. Okay, like the restaurant example, like the Instagram example, APIs are the foundation of modern world software. Okay. So today we don't want to build anything from scratch because we already have people who have built things from scratch. Okay. We just want to utilize that. We want to collaborate. Okay. And we want to use their APIs, use their features in our own application to fast forward it, to reduce, uh, you know, go to market and so on and so forth. That's why you will see that people use APIs a lot 
a lot. Not just integrating with external APIs, but when you're de developing your own feature, your own product, you still use APIs to micromanage individual features so that in the near future, it is effective uh, and it is, you know, kind of easy to iterate over features and iterate over, uh, you know, like classify it and divide your complete monolithic architecture into small, small microservices. I hope if, if this does not make sense, API in very simple term would mean login with uh, Google or sign up with Twitter or login with GitHub. They utilize different third party APIs which enable you to sign in with Google account into a third party application, uh, which is obviously kind of utilizing their API and their architecture to authenticate you. There's an API for literally everything and anything, okay? So there's a cat API. If you don't like cats, you're a dog person, there's a dog API. If you write crocodiles, there's a crocodile API as well, okay? So there are different types of APIs which are available in this world. And people develop APIs and, uh, you know, there are people who consume APIs, okay? Spotify also has APIs, uh, Twitter has APIs, Google has APIs, and all these companies enable small developers, not just small developers, like literally everyone to utilize their feature and kind of use their APIs to build something awesome, okay? So yeah, uh, you know, I'll quickly show you an example later on of how Google search uses APIs and how you can leverage that power within Postman. Okay, why are we learning about APIs? what it is that is so important about APIs uh, in today's world. Like, why is there a boom about APIs? Why are we not talking about machine learning or blockchain or, you know, all this fancy technologies and why about APIs? Because APIs um, are literally everywhere and there has been a, a big deal of rising uh, in terms of people adapting API first approaches from Netflix to your Dream 11 app to everything, they utilize the power of APIs. So if you want to understand why people go API first, you will have to go back into your past. Uh, I don't mean your ex, I mean past means past, you know, uh, when you were a kid and you used to play with Legos, okay? So Hany, has anyone played with Legos? Yes, no, no. Uh, give me a yes, no in chat. Anyone played with these plastic blocks, which were like, you know, you could assemble them, you could detach them, you could throw at, uh, you know, throw that to kind of your friends and all that stuff. Oh, yes. Yeah, obviously we did, you know, work with Legos. Yeah, <laughs> very fun to work with. Okay. So consider each Lego block as an API. Okay. You assemble these Lego blocks together and then you make something huge, something big. Okay. And you complete your software. Now, because they are made of Legos, it does not mean that you cannot expand it further. If you want, you can break this and you can convert this into something big, okay? Add features and then keep growing on top of that. You don't like it, you dismantle the whole architecture, rebuild it from scratch without doing a lot, uh, you know, without kind of, you know, going and restructuring a lot of things. Because every service, every feature acts as a distinct unit, okay? That is why APIs are so famous. And that is why people talk about API first approaches all the time. Okay, enough of, uh, you know, talking about APIs and why they're important. How you as a beginner can get started, okay? What is your first step towards building an API? What is your first step towards consuming an API, okay? So firstly, you will learn how to consume it, okay? Once you learn how to consume it, you understand the power of APIs, then you can go and build your APIs and monetize it and earn money from it, okay? So let's get started. Uh, let's talk about, uh, you know, what is Postman and how you can consume APIs using Postman or build APIs using Postman. So what is Postman in the very first place? Postman is a collaborative API development platform, okay? I emphasize on the word collaborative because Postman, has this feature where you can collaborate with n number of members in a single team, working on a single API, everything together, okay? So why, why to use Postman, right? Why can't I just use call commands or I can use you know, other tools which are kind of available? Why to use Postman? Very simple, 98% of Fortune 500 companies use Postman. 
more than 17 million developers use Postman. Okay, so by default, it becomes the industry standard tool out there to work with APLs. Okay, also apart from that, uh, 500,000 organizations use AP, uh, you know Postman as their API platform. So that makes Postman a leader uh, in this space. And that is why uh, you know, we use Postman to kind of learn about APIs and explore with Postman. Uh, again, you know, when I started my journey as a developer, I started off by building APIs over Postman. And anyone who's a backend developer, you can ask them, probably they might be using Postman uh, for sure because it is a handy tool uh, with, you know, which comes with a lot many features which will ease your development journey and your consumption journey, um, you know, at a greater extent. So what is the difference? Why can't I use just call commands? Very simple, uh, you know, point around that is call commands are so difficult to work with. And if you don't like this command line windows, then it is also annoying because you cannot share these things with others. Uh, collaboration uh, is a task and, you know, uh, it's just difficult to kind of get out of data from there and kind of build on top of, uh, you know, call commands. That's why we use Postman, which provides you easy UI, collaborative features. You can comment on others' work, you can assign work and have an overall org control, uh, which can give you complete access, uh, you know, and kind of you can see everything was happening around. So that is why uh, we kind of, you know, use Postman um, as we uh, kind of move forward. Now, Working with APIs is pretty easy, okay? When we say it is easy, uh, what, what do I really mean is that you just need to learn two parts, okay? Part number one is basically talking about how do we request data from API? And part number two is basically decoding the response we receive from the server once we request something, okay? So the request response, you request something, server responds with something, we are good. That is all which is required in consumption part, okay? So today, if I want to know the location of International Space Station, I hope you're aware what is International Space Station. So if you want to know the location of that, sitting at your home, you can do so. How? By using NASA APS, okay? So that is a simple task. Now, uh, you can obviously, you know, know 10 different stuff apart from knowing where International Space Station is located at this given moment, okay? So let's learn how to decode APIs. The very first part, requesting, okay? So how does this request response pattern work in real life? Let's say you have a client. Client can be anything. As I've told you, it can be your watch, it can be your mobile phone, it can be a kiosk, uh, you know, and it, it can be anything which has an interface, okay? Anything which is an interface. You use the network and you use web APIs to make a request to the server where the resources are located, okay? And then you access this resources, you do some operations on top of that resources, and then you request for a response. Then the client decodes this response and displays it in a way people can understand. For example, uh, usually if you're using REST APIs, it will work around JSON object. Okay, simple key value pair, all XML objects, okay, which are, again, you know, a kind of a semi-structure, uh, you know, response. So there are different kinds of data which you can request and you get a response and then you decode it and you're good, okay? So how do we make this request? There are three important factors while making the request, method, address, and path. Let's learn more about them, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you live how it works, okay? So let me go to postman.com, oops. Okay, so I'll show you how, how it actually works in, in a very, very simple term, okay? I don't get scared about the UI. <laughs> I'll explain you everything, how it works and everything. But the major idea I want to show you is a demonstration, okay? So let's say I go to this workspace and I hit an endpoint www.google.com and hit a send. Okay. So what I'm doing is I am requesting 
Google's homepage and this is what I should be, you know, seeing. And if you come here, you can see that it returns me some HTML. If you click on preview, you can see that I'm able to see something like that, but the CSS is broken. That is fine. We are not worried about CSS right now. Okay. The main idea is how I can use Google search as an API. Okay. So we went to google.com, we hit a get request and we sent that request and we received a response. Okay. And the response had a status code. It had time. It took to kind of send and receive the response and the body itself, which is kind of the data, which Google sent us back when we sent a get request to Google. Okay. Now, how about we write something inside this box? Okay. So how are we going to do that? We are going to use a query parameter, which can help us filter data and sometimes add data. So I'm going to add a key as Q and I'm going to add a value as let's say a push man. Okay. And then I hit send again. Okay. What happened now? What happened is the postman is written inside this text box. Okay. So we were successfully be able to write postman inside the text box. We were able to kind of, you know, do this very easily. But if I go to Google and I search for postman, what I see is a result page, right? I see the search result page, but here it is different. I have added this here but it does not return me the results, a result page. Why is it? So we understood two parts, right? Part number one, method. Method helps us to kind of do something. It is an action verb, okay? We will talk about different methods and what they do, but the first part is method. The second part is the path. We hit a send and then we are good. Now the third part is uh, where we talk about the URL and all that stuff, right? So uh, someone has any idea why it did not give us search results? and just wrote Postman inside the box? Yes? A lot, okay. Flex OP. <laughs> okay, I see that chat on YouTube. Okay, this is good. Um, cool. Post method is required. No, post method is not required. Mm, method is right. Uh, post method is not required. Anyone else? Give it a try. Nothing hurts, right? I'm not going to take away anything from you if you give wrong answer i will be happy that you at least tried so yeah okay observe carefully this is the url okay but it does not tell us where to look on the server okay so here we do have the home page, but we do not have the path where the resource is located. Okay. Resource can be located anywhere on the server, right? But we need to know the exact path where the resource is located. And in this case, the resource is located on the path search. Okay. Let's hit again and see if we are right about this. Hit us end and let's see the response. What do we see? Do we see the result page? Yes, we do. How? Because now we searched at a specific location where the resource was located. Okay. We added a path where the resource is located and that is what we are able to get the response as needed. Cool. Looks good. Okay. Now, when I send it here, uh, you know, this looks really scary, right? It has so many details, right? So if I kind of directly search for Postman, uh, you see that it has so many, you know, uh, your params which are added, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna paste this here in this URL. Hit enter and zero down this, let me zero down this and see this different params which Google is sending apart from Q. So even with Q, your job is done, okay? You don't need all these params. But these params helps Google to collect some data and kind of, you know, let know where the things are coming from and all that information, which is crazy because uh, it collects a lot of information apart from the Q. So just with Q, 
you can actually search properly and without any problem. But with all these params, it, it, it sends some amount of data from your browser to Google whenever you Google, and you see a big URL up there. Okay. So next time you see this big URL up there, what is what you're going to do is you're going to use this Postman client, paste your URL here, and understand what are the key and what are the value which is being sent from your computer system. Okay. And that's a very good handy decoding tool. Okay. So that is uh, how you can, you know, I showed you a very small demonstration of how this actually works. Okay. So what are the methods? What each method do? Starting with the get method. Get methods helps us retrieve information, push to send information, put to update information, and delete to delete information from the server. These are also called as action verbs because they perform action on the server. Okay. Get method, getting information, post method, adding information. Put patch to get information and delete method to delete information. Now, let's talk about the URL. The URL is also divided into three different parts. Part number one, protocol. Okay. What is the protocol? Is it HTTP? HTTP, uh, sorry, HTTPS or HTTP? Okay. So, what is the protocol? Okay. Or is it a web socket? WS, uh, you know, web socket, or is it some other protocol? So you need to kind of make sure you know the protocol which you're working with. So the first part of the URL is the protocol. The second part of the URL is the host. It is usually an IP address or a domain name. Okay, domain name again is nothing but an IP address marks under the name. So this is where the host is situated. And the last part is the part where the resource is located, okay? Or you can say destination where you can find the resource and execute it, okay? So in our case, it was search. If you do not add search, then it was not doing anything but being on the home page, okay? So that's about very simple methods and the endpoint, okay? The path, everything else. Cool. One more thing which you often send is body. Okay, now body is usually sent with a post and a put request. What is body? Body is like a payload. Okay, what is a payload? In very simple term, when you're using REST API, we use JSON format. So let's say I want to register a user. Okay, you know, come there and ask user to kind of register. So what the user is going to do is they are going to enter their name, email, birth year, password, all that stuff. Now I can use this, convert this into JSON and send an API request, which is a push request to create the user on the server. Okay. And this is where the body is required. The payload is required. Okay. So there are different types of data types like form data, JSON, text, HTML, XML, files, GraphQL, and so on and so forth. But for this, uh, you know, workshop, we are going to use JSON. Cool. We send the request. Now we receive a response. Three elements in response, status code, which tells you if your request was good or bad. Have you ever heard about 404? What does that mean? 404, not found, right? So whenever you see 404, it means not found. So you're only aware about 404, but there are other status code. For example, 200, everything is okay. 201, resource was created on the server. Okay, 204, no content. Okay, 500, internal server error. So there are other codes which are kind of available, which will tell you what happened with your request. If it was executed, if it was not executed, is there some problem, you're not authorized and so on and so forth. That is one part. Another part is headers. Headers are metadata, data about data. Okay, we'll talk about it more detail in practical, uh, but yeah, remember headers are metadata. Then comes body. Body is where the data is located. Uh, nothing less than a gold mine. Okay. So this is where what you requested for is located. Okay. In a restaurant example, body will be your food. Okay. Which you ordered and which is served to you. Obviously, uh, you know, the metal plate surrounding it, the cover and all that decoration would be headers, which are metadata. Okay. Some information, some something which is useless, but still, you know, and not useless, <laughs> it is useful as well, but you know, 
uh, helps you to kind of you know walk around uh, with your data. So yeah, majorly the body. Enough of talking. Let's get to hands on. Um, so I'm sending this URL in the chat right now. Also remember you can uh, you know follow us on Discord, and Discord is where we kind of you know share a lot more uh, about different challenges and all that. So I will share the link to the Discord server in the chat, which you can join later on. Cool. So what are we going to work with today? Today we are going to work with basics of API. Okay. So this is basics of API. Click on this three cock and click on create a fork copy. So you need to create a fork copy of this collection to get started. Make sure you're logged in into Postman. Okay. Because if you're not logged in, then it will not allow you to create a fork copy. If you do not have an account, I'll give you a minute to create an account. Okay. So yeah. Fork label, you can add the date as the label, okay, or anything as a label. It is just, you know, it helps you to distinguish from the master and, you know, the sub repositories. So, yeah, you can use, uh, I usually use date. So, I'll be like 15 September. And then the workspace, you will only see my workspace. Okay. I have multiple workspaces here. So, I'm going to select demo workspace. Um, you will only see my workspace. Okay. Once you see that, hit fork collection and it will create a fork copy uh, you know a copy of this in your workspace okay so i'll take a pause here i will wait for you and once you're done give me a thumbs up in the chat okay sending the url again just to make sure everyone is on the very same page okay Okay, once you're done with this, uh, give me a thumbs up so that I know, you know, you are following with me and I can wait for your feedback to move forward. Yes, folks. Um, yeah, so before we started the workshop, the folks were 1750. I see around 50 people in the call. So I'm expecting at least 20 following with me. So this should go to 17. What my match is weak. Okay, let's let's take 20. So 1735, right? Let's see how much uh, it grows to. Okay, I see I see three more people focus. this. What about others? Where are others? Come on, do it fast. Okay, I see 20, 15 more to go. Remember, if you do not have an account, uh, create an account that takes a minute. It is free. Okay, there is no problem. Um, there is no costing. Completely free for individuals and team of three. Okay. If you're more than three, then you'll have to pay for it. But if you're a student, you can get a free license for unlimited request, unlimited team, and everything. Okay. I'll tell you how at the end of the session. So yeah, stick to the end. Okay, we have 25 years, so I'll, you know, I'll start so that others are also kind of poking till then. So I'll click on fork and it will reload the whole browser automatically. Okay. So you can see, you can wait for a second. It will create a fork and reload that and put this inside your workspace. Okay. Cool. I see a thumbs up. Amazing. So now you can see you can see why we use label because you can see your uh, it shows label like this. Okay, and you can differentiate it if we have multiple copies. Okay. Cool. So you might not see other collections, but you will only see one collection. Now, before we start with anything new, what is the very first thing we should see? If I want to learn a new language, if I want to learn a new framework. If I want to do something new, what is the first thing I should do as a developer? Syntax. Yeah, syntax, but you know, like what syntax? Where, where will I see the syntax? If I'm a developer and I want to get started with a new tech, what is the very first thing I need to see? 
exactly the very first thing i need to see is documentation though we don't tend to see documentation but we should not ignore it okay um so yeah <laughs> uh, let's let's go and see the documentation what does this basics of api allow us to do okay so how to open documentation go to this three dots okay and click on view documentation i can see a window like this view documentation click on that and it will open the documentation this is the endpoint url go to endpoint and tell me what do you see go to the endpoint url and tell me what do you see on the home page yes folks pretty simple you should see hello world okay hello world yeah exactly okay so this is the base home home base of the api which says hello world okay but we are not going to use that api so we have three apis here in the place quote joke and book which one do you folks want to work with today come on let's have a quick poll let's get back the dead audience to life <laughs> um okay i see joke 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 what about others where where are others 40 people in the chat i need 20 you know i need the chat going up right now okay joke api i see no one like books okay <laughs> uh, i see only one word for books uh, else everything is joke okay 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 i know you know you are doing engineering which is a joke so everyone is like you know joke 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 mm, i can relate to it no problem okay let's get started <laughs> um yeah uh, we will we will go ahead with joke api right now because everyone seems to like the joke api okay so copy this copy this endpoint okay control c copy this endpoint okay and on the right hand side you see jump to section and we need to jump to the joke api section okay because we are using the joke api cool so jump to joke api joke api section now go back to basics of api and click on get data and here you can see add the url here so add that url which you copied from there add that url here save this always save this very very important okay uh joke joke okay i see that okay cool now because we are using the joke api we are going to add the part as forward slash joke okay and then hit enter okay folks tell me what is the status code you receive do you receive a status code after you send this request yes yes 200 okay what does it mean it means hey it is working fine you got a response and what did we get in the response everyone will get a different response okay this is a random joke so there are four jokes which are there on the server which are random like for example the joke i can see is the first rule of programming if it works don't touch it a uh, very good joke obviously not a joke or reality but yeah for non programmers it, it seems to be a joke okay uh yeah who is a programmer answer a programmer is the one who turns coffee into code yeah you know caffeine into code uh same cool um so that is something which is uh kind of you know uh like you get a random joke so if you hit it again you will see a different joke like here what is the hardware a piece of soft uh, a piece of computer which you can kick exactly right um you know kicking the cpu all the time cool <laughs> okay now what if i want to get a specific joke i don't want to get a random joke let's say i want to show everyone what is a hardware joke so what is the id of this joke the id is one so now earlier we used the query params right so now i'm going to use a path variable okay so what i'm going to do observe carefully and do it with me okay i'm going to add a forward slash I'm going to add pull well, and then add ID here. Okay. And as I add ID, I see something which is called as a path variable emerge from nowhere. Right. So you don't see it here. Uh, earlier, we did not see it here, but now it is visible here. So in the path variable, we are going to add the ID. Everyone is going to add the ID one because we want that hardware joke. Hit send. And see if you see the hardware joke. If you do, give me a thumbs up. Yes. 
Hello. Yes? Yes. Okay. Let's say we want to check joke number 10. Joke number 10, tell me what is joke number 10? Yes, folks, tell me what is joke number 10? Mm -hmm. Not found. So what is the status code here? What should be the status code here? Four zero four, right? Do we see the status code four zero four? Yes, because there are only four jokes. So zero, one, two, three. Okay. Uh, that, and apart from that, there are no jokes. Okay. So we were able to successfully retrieve specific information based on ID. We were able to also retrieve random information based on you know the documentation. Now I need your creative minds to add your joke onto the server. Okay. So I want to add something to the server. Which kind of method are, am I going to use? I want to add something to the server. Which kind of method am I going to use? Put method, that is going to be updating, right? If I don't have anything, post method, exactly. So let us add another request. So go to basics of API, hover over it, click on these three dots and click on add request, the fourth option, okay? Click on add request. Once you click on that, it will ask you for a name add the name as add joke so don't keep it nameless okay uh, choose the name add joke method is going to be post save this and let's go and add the url so this is the url the url is exactly the same without the id obviously so the url is added here let's hit send and see if we are able to successfully send our joke Can you, can someone tell me what is the error? Yes. And we have discovered a new status quo, which we did not talk about earlier. Come on folks. Yes. So what, what does push requires? Push requires a body. And that is why we got 400, which is bad request. You did not pass, you did not fulfill this, you know, properly, whatever the server was requesting. So we need to add the body, but I don't know how the body looks like, right? The body is going to be raw and it is going to be JSON, but what does the body look like? Who will tell me this? Mm -hmm. Who will tell me what does the body look like? No, 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 not same as get response. <laughs> that is assumption. <laughs> uh, we don't work on assumptions, uh, Rithik. Yes. Come on, folks. Uh, should I should I call sleepy audience again? As the output shown? No, 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 no. That is not how it is going to be. Remember before we started, what, what did I tell you? What we have to focus on before we start doing something. Yes. Documentation. So let's open documentation. This is the documentation. So you can see it is like a Chrome tab. Okay. So I can switch between tabs. So I can see the documentation. I need to see the documentation of post request. Okay. So here you can see the path is for a slash and the body structure is like this. So copy the structure of the body. You can also use this button. Once copy it, switch the tab and paste it here. Hit send again and tell me what do you see? Obviously save this, okay, before hitting sign. You will still receive an error. What is the error? Yes. So the error is ID one already exists. Okay. So you cannot add ID one because ID one is already there. So now do two things. Change the ID to any positive integer apart from, you know, anything above four. 
So for example, I'm going to use 101 to not clash with anyone. Change your name as well, okay? Don't keep my name. I cannot change my name for this session, right? So <laughs> um, you change your name. Uh, no, I mean, you change my name to your name, okay? So, you know, remove this and add your name there. Uh, keep the joke as it is. We will update that joke later on. But change your name, change the ID to any numeric integer and hit ascend again. And you will see a new status code. What does that status code mean? Yes, folks, add, add. Yeah, I can see Shubham has added. Uh, Aryaman has added and one person used my name. <laughs> so there are two Aliyam um, in the session. Okay, uh, not bad, not bad. Let me see more. Okay, I only see four on the back end. What about others? Where is my sleepy audience? Come on, folks. Don't you want swags and all stuff? No, nothing, nothing excites you. Okay, uh, let me, uh, you know, see more to come. Okay, so I've also created a view for you folks, which gives me an idea around how the new jokes are added. So as soon as the new jokes are added, I can see it on the view. Okay, so if someone adds a post request, I can see it here, right here. Okay, now don't tell your ID to anyone, okay? Because your ID is important. And unless people know your ID, they cannot do anything with your joke, right? Because they don't know your ID. Uh, obviously, they know my ID. But uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so here you can see no name engineering. That is also uh, funny. And there are three Ali Mustafas now in the chat. Okay. One, two, three. Uh, anyone else uh, who is uh, adding jokes? So I'll wait for you. No, anyone from YouTube side, folks? Are you adding jokes? Uh, you did not answer my question. What does 201 status code mean? Because we got a different status code altogether, right? Did we? Yes, we did. Created, right? So we created a resource on the server and we got this code, right? Okay. Okay. So let me refresh it once more because we are on the final, uh, you know, part here. So I can see. Yeah, I added one more. I see one more joke here. How does it work? Okay. Cool. So now that we have added, we have seen, you know, these things. Let's save this and move forward to updating our joke. Okay. How are we going to update our joke? First, we are going to add a request. Name it. Update joke. Okay. Now, copy the same URL, paste it here. Update is also going to require a body raw JSON. How does the body look like exactly as the post request? Okay. But the method is going to be, what is the method going to be to update the joke on the server? It is going to be put request. Okay, cool. So now you change the joke, okay? Make sure you are using your own ID. Don't use others ID, okay? Use your own ID and change the joke. I have a very funny joke. I am a full stack developer because I pull for the internet, right? This looks good, right? I'm a full stack developer because I don't know if this is if this is funny or not, but yeah, I'm gonna go ahead with this joke, okay? So we we see again another status code, okay? Which is new one. Can someone tell me what does that mean? So if I refresh here, should I see my updated joke? Yes or no? Yes. Yeah, so if I refresh here, I can see I'm a full stack developer because I pull code from internet. Sleepy people can't joke. Yeah, exactly, right? See, I, I only have, what, eight jokes here, right? With, with an audience of 40, uh, 35 people. Uh, earlier, it was like 40 or something. 
uh, praising. <laughs> okay. Um, come back to life, folks. Uh, did Thanos kind of snap his fingers or something? Because I see, uh, you know, a lot of you disappearing in the chats. Okay. Um, let me see how people update their jokes. Uh, I still see Ar Ar Arman has not yet updated his joke. It bugs our features only. Shubham, uh, Kritik, how does it work? How does it work? Uh, hmm, that is not a joke. That is a question, is it? Okay. <laughs> um, what about others? Um, engineering. Okay, engineering, I give you the credit for that. But you did not update it. Okay. Make sure you use your own ID Okay, while updating the joke because your ID is only known to you and not to others. Let's change nothing and run it again. That is a good joke. Okay. Life is boring. Dream is fun. Mm, who is this who is uh, kind of using my name to add philosophy? <laughs> life is boring and dream is fun. Uh, so life is fun, you know. Uh, life is really fun. And dreams are not fun. You know, you, you see cockroaches in a dream. <laughs> okay. Uh, Aryaman has up, updated. What is a ghost favorite type? Boolean. Um, I can give you a credit for that. That is a funny joke. Okay. Um, okay, this is good. This is a joke. That's it. Um, okay. <laughs> um, um, you know, with all this joke, I, I assume every one of you is single. Okay. With all that joke you have kind of, you know, wrote here, I can proudly say all my audience is similar. <laughs> okay, <laughs> cool. So we have done uh, with, with the pool, uh, you know, put request as well. Now, the last part, you need to delete your jokes. Which method are you going to use to delete your jokes? Come on, folks, be quick. Can you do that for me? Can you delete? the joke for me yes can you do that can you add a delete request and refer to the documentation and delete the joke for me which you added i should see jokes disappearing from here okay come on be quick oh i see few jokes gone Okay, so I've deleted my joke. So you can see there is one less joke. Okay. So yeah, delete your jokes as well. Come on, folks, be quick. So click on these three buttons, add request, delete joke. The method is going to be delete. Uh, the URL. So let's refer to the documentation. Before that, we save this request. Go to documentation and in the documentation we need to delete right so to delete a joke add a joke id of the joke example three okay looks good so here i'm going to add uh, the example of 101 but i've already deleted it so it should be already gone So you can see I have Tokyo ID 101 is deleted. So you should see something like this and you're done. Come on folks, everyone deleted the joke. Give me a thumbs up once you're done. Yes. Okay, so let me see how many of you have deleted it. Okay, only two people left to delete. Shubham and Aryaman. Okay, you folks delete it. Um, and then we are good. So that is the end of our practical. Okay. What did we learn? We learned about methods. What are the types of method did we learn about? Come on. Um, 
what are the types of method we learned about? Mm -hmm. We learned about get, post, put, delete. Exactly, four methods, okay? Get to retrieve information, post to add information, put to update information, and delete to delete information. Then what did we learn about addresses? What are the parts of addresses? If I talk about endpoint, how many parts does an endpoint have? Three, right? So first part is the protocol, second part is the domain, and the third part is the path. What about parameters? What are the two types of parameters we saw? While working with it, two types of parameters we, which we saw. One was one which we saw in Google search, and the other one which we saw in the Joe KPI. So one was ID. Yeah, ID is ID is path. Okay. So yeah, query and path exactly. Okay. Then okay, tell me what is the major disadvantage of this server. Uh, if I wanted to, you know, tell the major disadvantage of the server, what is the major disadvantage of this server? Yeah. Authorization and authentication. Anyone, like the whole idea, the integrity, there is no integrity in the server, okay? Anyone can come, anyone can edit anything, anyone can send anything. Um, the server is vulnerable, okay? So that is not the ideal situation, right? So yeah, if anyone gets your ID, they can obviously kind of, you know, uh, use that to delete your joke, update your joke to anything which you even did not intend, okay? So authorization is the process which actually helps the user to identify themselves and their scope, okay? So that is about authorization. And then body data, which kind of body data did we use? JSON. What is the full form of JSON? Anyone? Mm -hmm. What is the full form of JSON? If anyone knows. Yes, JavaScript object notation. Very simple key value pair, which we are going to use. Okay, which we used already. Cool. If you're excited by this, join, start your journey to become a Postman student expert. As a student expert, you get a badge, which is verifiable. You can add it to LinkedIn on your resume with 500,000 organizations using Postman. It becomes a very, very essential skills. API has become a very, very essential skills. Okay. We have got many requests from employers to verify student experts as well. So it is something which is well in demand in the industry. So go uh, and become a Postman student expert. The URL for the program is given here. You can go and you can apply to become a Postman student expert uh, without, uh, you know, without much of a detail. Everything is automated. So it will give you an idea about how to complete the process and how to become the part of the community. Okay. Last part, winning amazing swags. Um, there are two ways you are going to earn swags. Okay. So just to, you know, make sure you, uh, you know, are excited about it. So two ways of you know earning swags. The first way is to write a blog. Okay. So give me a moment. Yeah. Oops. Where is my presentation? Okay. So the first way is writing a blog. So top three people who will write the blog um, around the workshop you attended all the details in particular detail with screenshots and all with uh, the practical you performed. Uh, we will give top three people swag, okay? The swag contains two items. We will ship it directly to your house based on the number of entries we get, okay? Once you write the blog, don't worry. We will find your blog. Use hashtag Postman student and also tag your e-cell, uh, you know, who are hosting this workshop so that we can identify your entry from this workshop, okay? You don't have time to write a blog, understood. Share your learnings in simple format using hashtag Postman student on, on LinkedIn or on Twitter. 
and you will get some uh, swags there as well. We will select two people from the social media challenge uh, who are from Twitter and on LinkedIn. Uh, you need to tag, uh, you don't need to tag, you need to use hashtag postman student while sharing uh, on the social media, okay? So social media, for us, that is only two, two platform, Twitter and LinkedIn. So make sure uh, you uh, kind of summarize your learnings on Twitter and on LinkedIn. Remember, we are not giving away prize to people who get more number of likes or more number of comments. Prizes are given to people who are going to write well about what they learned throughout the session, okay? So either you write a blog in detail, you get better swags, three people there, and two people for social media, okay? We will follow up uh, with your club and arrange your swags as soon as possible. So best of luck uh, with getting the swag. Okay, you wanna learn more, you can go and explore Postman and different resources which are there. I am more than happy to answer any questions if there are any, and then we can end this call. So yeah, uh, open to questions. Any questions for me? Also, you can connect with me on LinkedIn uh, if you wish to, because I'm very active there. So if you need any help later on, I'll be more than happy to help you out. Else, you can also uh, connect to me via Instagram. So I have added it there as well. Added both the links there. Okay. So yeah. Uh, thank you so much uh, for that. Okay. Uh, let me stop uh, my screen sharing. And yeah. Uh, thank you so much uh, for the amazing session. It was really a great experience. And uh, to all the participants who are present here, I would like to mention I have provided a link to a feedback form. So all of you who attended this session, please provide your feedback and submit the form. So it is basically a Google form. Please feed in your responses as how was your experience regarding the whole workshop and the session. If you have any questions for uh, Ali here, you can post it in the chat. So we'll take it up and uh, we can go with it else. We'll wait for a couple of minutes. Yeah, so Krithik Modi is having a question. Uh, how to create a collection with JSON files? Uh, so if you, if, are you telling me that you wanna import collections, right? So if you have a JSON, um, like you have created a collection somewhere else and you want to import that, you can use JSON and then you can import that. So that you can do in Postman, that is not a problem. Um, if you're asking that, then yeah, you can do so. If you want, I can share the tutorial or just ping me on Discord and I'll be able to solve that. So yeah. Uh, I think uh, we have no more questions coming up right here. So people who are having anything to uh, convey to you, uh, they may con convey to you on social media. So I think we can uh, end it right here. And uh, is there anything else we are left with in this session? No, I'm done from my side. <laughs> so yeah. Um... All right, all right, all right. So yeah, great. It was an amazing session and uh, thanks to the entire Postman team as well as Ali himself. Uh, yeah, so there is the Discord link for the Postman community uh, Discord. So people who are interested, they can join there. All right, so uh, thank you. I think uh, we can end it right here. Thank you everyone. Thank you everyone for joining. Thanks Ali. Thanks.